Good morning, everyone. Uh, my na uh, name is Petra Varga, and uh, in the next couple of minutes, I would like to talk about uh, my uh, PhD topics, which are uh, about novel prognostic methodologies in childhood cancer. I'm a PhD student and a pediatric resident, and my supervisor is uh, Esther Tuboy, my SMS is Wanda Mati, and my statistician is Tamás Kui. I have a vision to modernize clinical care and research support in pediatric oncology, and uh, in order to reach this, um, I would like to bring in future-proof global approaches uh, in risk stratification of childhood cancer. I have two specific goals in two different projects. Um, the first one, uh, we will uh, compare the prognostic accuracy of prediction models used in childhood cancer, and in the second one, we will build a prognostic model using machine learning for uh, childhood cancer. So about my first topic, approximately 400,000 children and adolescents develop cancer worldwide each year, and even though the survival in high-income countries is more than 80%, we have still room for improvement. For example, the survival after relapse is significantly worse. Uh, here I show you an example of acute lymphoblastic leukemia uh, after relapse, and you can see that the survival is around 50%. Um, therefore, we think that predicting the prognosis is crucially important since it, since it will determine the initial therapy of the individual patients. These prognostic systems are working well in case of adults. However, the rarity of the individual can childhood cancer types uh, makes it really difficult to develop uh, good prognostic models. Uh, therefore, international collab collaborations are needed to provide sufficient data, and the childhood cancer data system should be in systems should be in implemented in order to drive continuous improvements in the quality of care and to inform policy decisions. Right now, our aim is to compare the, the accuracy of different prediction models uh, using, uh, used in uh, childhood cancer. For this, we considered articles about pediatric and young adult patients with any type of malignant tumors. We grouped the prediction models into three different categories. The first one uh, uses clinical data, the second one is based on robust genetic and transcriptomic data, and the third one uses artificial intelligence approaches. Our hypothesis is that the new generation prediction models will perform better, and among those, the AI-based ones will have the highest accuracy. The implication for our research would be to improve survival through improving prognostic accuracy and precision care. After the systematic search and selection, I had 283 eligible full texts. As outcomes, we considered the area under the receiver operating characteristics curve, which, is, uh, which shows us the sensitivity and specificity of the model. We also need the confidence interval and the standard error uh, for this data. And right now, uh, we have finished the analysis for uh, the one and five year overall survival for the AI models and the five year overall survival for clinical models but later I will have a lot more um, uh, survival and even data available, and I also have a secondary outcome, which is the concordance index. So um, on my first uh, forest plot, you can see the one-year overall survival predicted by AI-based models. Um, here I had uh, data about uh, solid tumors in uh, childhood, um, uh, occurring in childhood. Um, I had more data about uh, non-central nervous system solid tumors, and I had one article about uh, medulloblastoma. Uh, all of my articles are retrospective cohort studies uh, due to the nature of this uh, project, and uh, all of the patients uh, in these studies are pediatric patients and young adults. Um, and one year overall survival is, is an important outcome when deciding the induction therapy, uh, mostly in case of uh, tumors with worse prognosis. And here on the forest plot, you can see the area under the curve with the confidence intervals. Uh, if the area is one, then that uh, means that the accuracy of the model is perfect. And the closer this area is to one, the better the model performs. Uh, about, uh, uh, above uh, 1.8, we, uh, we can say that the model performs uh, exceptionally well. And here uh, you can see that uh, in case of non-CNS solid tumors, the area is 1.94, which is uh, really an excellent uh, accuracy for this model. So uh, we can say that this is a promising approach uh, for uh, uh, predicting prognosis. On my second forest plot, uh, you can see a very similar data, but uh, not one, uh, but five year overall survival, also predicted with AI models. Here I had a bit more uh, data about uh, non-CNS solid tumors, um, 
because uh, the five-year overall survival is the most commonly used um, outcome for, uh, uh, when deciding the treatment plan for uh, cancer patients. And um, this uh, higher number of articles also caused a bit higher heterogeneity uh, in case of this, uh, these models. And uh, also you can see that the, the first two articles, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, accuracy of the models is uh, visibly lower uh, than, uh, than the rest. And it, even in the third case, it's, we can say that it's uh, a bit low. But uh, nevertheless, uh, the accuracy is still 1.85. Which, uh, which is still a really good, um, uh, good accuracy. And we still have four articles that have uh, uh, the area above 1.9. Uh, on my third figure, we see the five-year overall survival predicted by uh, clinical database models. Uh, here I had even more articles, and uh, we had some data about hematological malignancies as well. Uh, here uh, we can see that the accuracy is 1.78 uh, and 1. Point, uh, sorry, 0 0.78 and 0 0.77, which is uh, below 1.8. So uh, we can say that it's uh, worse than in case of the previous two models, uh, but it's still a relatively uh, good performance. And here I show you again the five-year overall survival uh, with the AI-based and the clinical-based uh, models. And since we had enough data about uh, non-CNS solid tumors, we, um, uh, we could carry out a significance analysis. And the, the difference between the accuracies uh, was not significant, um, which is probably uh, due to the outlier articles in case of the AI models, because those, are, uh, sim uh, those uh, performed similarly uh, to the clinical models. I think the biggest strength of my project is that it will provide a broad overview of uh, many types of childhood cancer through a high number of articles and outcomes. However, we do have limitations as well. Uh, I would highlight that the heterogeneity of the prognostic models is really high, since there are no two articles really that uh, consider exactly the same set of genes or uh, clinical factors. In my first project, I am finished with the data extraction, and right now, uh, Tomás and I are working on uh, uh, some extra calculations that are needed uh, for the figures, because uh, we are not, uh, the confidence intervals and the standard er errors are usually not directly available in the article, so we need to do some extra calculations. So we are, we are working on that currently. Now I would like to move on to my second project. Uh, during the literature review for my meta-analysis, I saw that the AI models perform well regarding the accuracy of prognosis prediction. However, there are only a few studies available due to the low number of patients. And even though uh, right now there is a growing number of large databases in adult oncology, we have much less uh, quality assured and controlled data sets available for children. And one solution for this that I have seen in the literature is that uh, they trained the model on adults and they validated it on children. However, if, as you can see on the uh, lower uh, graph, uh, the accuracy significantly worsens in this case. So we think that another approach should be favored. Uh, namely, we should harness the data advantage of national registries. Therefore, uh, we plan to a uh, build an accurate prognostic model for childhood cancer using machine learning approach in order to support the clinical decision of risk stratification. Uh, for this, we plan to use the Hungarian Pediatric Oncology Network Registry, and uh, we will divide the work uh, because the clinical part will be done by us, and the AI parts, uh, for, for the AI part, we ask the help of an industry partner, namely Turbine AI, with the lead of Daniel Veres. And uh, to sum up, I would like to finish both of my projects by the fall of this year. And I would like to close my presentation with a quote. The difficulty lies not so much in developing new ideas as in escaping from old ones. Thank you for your attention. <coughs> Thank you, Patra, for your great presentation. I'm just wondering, uh, about your first project, that uh, you pull together all the solid tumor tumors. Would you like, or do you have the chance to analyze the data uh, for different types of tumors, or? Uh... Um, yes, thank you. Um, 
uh, yes, we, uh, for some solid tumors, we have enough data to uh, not just uh, analyze them as subgroups, as non-CNS or CNS solid tumors, but for example, for neuroblastoma and osteosarcoma, we have a lot of, lots of articles, so probably for those two, I think we will have the chance to analyze them on their own. And uh, what do you think? Uh, will you get the same uh, uh, results for each uh, type of tumors or? Um, I would say that uh, I, I think we will get um, even better results because the, um, this way the heterogeneity will be lower because uh, that is one factor in, uh, that causes heterogeneity that we, uh, we pull together different types of tumors which have different um, um, factors that, uh, um, that have an effect on the prognosis. So therefore, um, I, I would say that it will be even better. I'm just curious if, uh, when do you perform this prediction? Are the children right at the diagnosis or after treatment? Because after treatment, can you speak about the overall survival? So, yeah, that's my question. Uh, thank you. Um, yes, this is a good question because, um, of course, the, if we predict the prognosis after the therapy, then it can lead to bias. Um, so, uh, we have articles for uh, both, uh, right at the diagnosis and after uh, treatment. Um, usually, uh, if we consider the same outcome, they are the same. So, this way they are handled separately. But, uh, so for example, yes, overall survival is usually measured from diagnosis. So um, uh, there uh, is not really a chance that they had previous therapy uh, before uh, we try to predict the prognosis. Uh, but yes, we plan to handle uh, these cases separately. Okay, so you compared actually uh, artific artificial intelligence and, uh, and the clinical models. Yes. Now, I just wonder if, and then you find found no difference between the two. Yes. So is this primary, because one of the, I mean, obviously, I mean, you have a wide range, actually, of data, and then you put that in some kind of order. Uh, so what, what, what was the drive for putting that, them in this order, just to show, actually, that the difference between the midline or, or or they are categorized by different kind of tumors. The reason why I'm asking, because, I mean, the no difference may come actually from two type of heterogeneity. One is actually the method which is used, because not all the clinical models are the same, I mean, the predictions are the same, and the artificial intelligence too. So this could be one, and the other one is the different type of tumors. Um. Yes, um, so here uh, the order is based on the, uh, on the um, area under the curve, not the tumors. Uh, here most of the tumors are, in case of non-CNS -solid, non solid tumors, are neuroblastoma and osteosarcoma, and I think there is one article about Ewing sarcoma, so not, not as many types of tumors, but I have checked um, that uh, in case of the first uh, two articles that are uh, the worst uh, uh, that have the worst performance in case of the AI models, um, they did not really. So, if you only use AI for um, for the, your model to be modern, then that's not enough because the the most the biggest advantage of AI is that it can work with a very uh, high amount of data. But in those two articles, they just had a few, one, in one, the first article, they had a few uh, genes, and in the second article, they had like five clinical factors processed with AI methods. So they did not really use the advantage of AI models, so therefore, um, they did use the AI, so they, they got into the category of the AI-based models, but really, it's the same as the clinical ones. So I would say that this is the biggest reason why the difference is not significant here. Mm -hmm.